initially I was interested in just looking at the development of ES cells in culture and pushing them to develop like an embryo by themselves but they kept hitting a sort of wall and that we got to a point where they weren't really developing any further um, and that led us to ask the question whether adding their extra embryonic counterparts might help them to organise into something that, that mimics embryogenesis. The ES embryos are made out of the two types of stem cells, so we put embryonic stem cells together with trophoblast stem cells. Embryonic stem cells uh, are the cells that are able to generate the future embryo, and trophoblast stem cells are the cells that normally generate future placenta. And we put them together in a three-dimensional scaffold and try to make them interact with each other to build the embryo-like structures. And here they are, red cells are embryonic cells, and you can see how they progress in the development uh, together with the partnership of different type of stem cells in the embryo. And here you have extra embryonic stem cells in blue, and uh, you can see how they interact to generate very similar structure. So now the stem cells are powerful, magical type of cells in our body, but I didn't realize they have such an incredibly powerful capability of developing structures outside the body of the mother. The field would argue that our most surprising finding was a symmetry breaking event that happens after about five days of, of culture of the ETS embryos, where they specify a region of mesoderm on one side of the embryonic compartment only. And we know from the embryo that uh, an extra embryonic tissue that isn't modelled in the ETS embryo system, the visceral endoderm is really required for, for anteriorisation of the embryo and as far as we know you can't have anterior without pos posterior and you can't have posterior without anterior. So when we saw posteriorisation specification of mesoderm without this third tissue it really was kind of amazing. We are now here in that ET uh, embryogenesis missing one specific type of cells which make normal yolk cell. So we'll be able to understand how much embryo development can be mimicked without this third component which normally happens in development. Uh, so that's really already a very important insight but also we'll be able to modify specific pathways and relatively quickly identify the mechanisms that then we can confirm in real embryos. The kind of elephant in the room here is, can you make human ETS embryos? And I, I think it's possible, um, but there are complications because of how the human embryo is put together at very early stages. It's more of a flat disc rather than a, a cup-shaped epithelium that the mouse embryo is. And at the moment, our 3D system lends itself more to a, to a cup shape, a, a, a cylinder, rather than a flat disc. How have ETS embryos changed your research from a practical point of view and your research direction? They changed my research from a practical point of view because now we are not only studying embryo development using mouse embryos but also we will be able to mimic uh, critical stages of development with stem cells and we are now here in that ET uh, embryogenesis missing one specific type of cell which make normal yolk cell. So we'll be able to understand how much embryo development can be mimicked without this third component, which normally happens in development. Uh, so that's really already a very important insight, but also we'll be able to modify specific pathways and relatively quickly identify the mechanisms that then we can confirm in real embryos. I'd love to know how the structures break symmetry. Given that what I told you before, we expect a requirement for a, for a signalling centre to pattern the embryonic compartment and the fact that we don't have that um, begs the question, well what is breaking the symmetry if there's no inhibitory signalling centre to stop the whole um, ES compartment being posterior, becoming mesoderm. We've got a few hypotheses on that, and hopefully, before I finish my PhD, I'll have some sort of answer. Probably not the complete answer, because I think it's going to be a complicated problem, mm -hmm. and it's one that 
even people looking at embryonic bodies still don't know the answer to. And, and people have been showing symmetry breaking and, and polarization events in embryonic bodies for 20 years. So why I should expect to, to be able to shed any light on it in two months, three months, I don't know. But we've got some ideas.